What happened to shareware? Have you ever really thought about it? While technically shareware exists in some form or another today, the idea of passing along physical media and sharing it with friends or co-workers is an outdated concept. Before the days of widespread high-speed internet, kids like me who grew up in the 90s and early 2000s would get video games anywhere we could. Sure, there were new game releases just as there are now. However, for many of us, as kids, we didn't get those too often or failed to convince the parents that they were something that we needed in our life. So what do you do when you can't get new games? You play the ones you have or grab what you can from friends and family. Now, when CD-ROMs became more common, cheap software compilation discs were everywhere and provided hours of digital entertainment. CDs from the likes of Software USA, Galaxy of Games, and others were usually filled to the limits with free shareware goodies. Even Microsoft Windows discs back then were packed with games and extra content. Now, if we bypass the nostalgia glasses for just a second, it reveals that most of these collections were filled with utter trash. However, like any good dumpster, you can find some gems if you're willing to dig. Or sometimes you still play the games even if they were trash because, you know, boredom. So I'm going to show you seven obscure shareware games or demos that held my attention for hours back in the day. Some of these I still think are great, others not so much. So let's get started. So the first game we're talking about here is Zombie Castle, released by Komodo Ware in 1994. See, I wasn't kidding that most of these games are obscure. I don't even remember how I got this game as a kid, but I remember playing it quite a bit. Gameplay consists of you, a random hero, exploring a castle in a top-down perspective. To advance to the next level, you must find keys, use secret passages, and avoid or attack monsters. There are a few different weapons, but combat is mostly unsatisfying, frustrating, and repetitive. Playing it now, I realize this was sort of a gauntlet clone and not really a good one in retrospect. Still, it had that signature shareware Windows 3.1 graphics style and some horrible MIDI music that did sort of invoke feelings of horror. Overall though, it is a bland game that even back in the day probably never warranted the $15 plus $2 postage for the registered version. This is a case of one of those games that wasn't really any good, but I played it over and over on the basis that it was a game that existed on my computer. What can I say? I liked it as a seven year old and back then I had no taste. And speaking of no taste, let's talk about our next game. Scunny, Back to the Forest released by Copysoft in 1993. Oh man, Scunny is a name that strikes fear into the hearts of DOS gamers everywhere. It's a series coined as bad by many, and by all accounts it kind of is. Back to the Forest is the first of many Scunny games, and it is a mediocre, Sonic-inspired platformer that controls much like your drunk uncle in a minivan. The platforming and movement are very drifty and out of control. However, this was one of the very first PC games I remember playing when I was around five years old, and along with Commander Keen, I played it probably every day that I was allowed to. Now, to some, playing Scunny every day sounds like some sort of inhumane punishment for a crime, but I loved it for some reason. The shareware version I had only had one level that I played on repeat, and I never played the full version even to this day. That's probably much to my benefit since I hear the later levels are almost impossible. While some of the hate for the Scunny games are deserved, this game isn't the worst and I did have some good memories of playing it. What shouldn't be overlooked though is the fact that Scunny's last name is Hardnut and uh, this in-game quote seems a bit unsettling. Anyway, let's move on to our next game, which is Exile, Escape from the Pit, released by Spiderweb Software in 1996. Okay, so now we're actually getting to some lost classics. Exile, Escape from the Pit is a top-down, party-based CRPG masterpiece. This is one of those games that you would find on a shareware disc and get completely immersed in. Exile was my first dip into an open world RPG that really gave you the choice to do almost anything you wanted. Although the shareware version creatively limited you by having an in-game NPC known as the shareware demon block certain locations, you could still have a heck of a lot of fun. 
You could attack any NPC, steal things, complete quests, and question NPCs, all while moving around a large game world. You could also customize your party members, and there were tons of spells and powers to play with. In addition, it is often overlooked that the actual writing and story are crafted in a very immersive way that is sort of reminiscent of reading a book. Even today, the game still feels like something special, and unlike some on this list, I still recommend it. Jeff Vogel, the mastermind behind this series, is still making and selling games in a similar vein today, which is a testament to how well they still hold up two decades later. These days, the original version of Exile has been released as freeware. Spiderweb Software has also since remade them as the Avernum series, which is probably the better version if you're looking to try them out. So that brings us to our next game, which is Speedy Egbert by eGames, released in 1998. It's no secret that 1998 was a killer year for games. It's almost hard to believe that Zelda Ocarina of Time, Resident Evil 2, Final Fantasy 7, Half-Life, Thief Dark Project, and Fallout 2 were all released in that same year. Of course, all of these games pale in comparison to arguably the greatest game of that year, or possibly ever. This of course would be Speedy Freakin' Eggbert. I enjoyed this game so much that later in life I managed to track down a sealed copy of the full release, which will no doubt be worth multiple dollars someday. Jokes aside, this is a pretty neat platformer. The objective in every level is to gather all the treasure boxes by running, jumping, avoiding environmental hazards, and defeating enemies. It also has a strong puzzle element that will have you pushing boxes or utilizing one of the many different types of power-ups like jetpacks, cars, weapons, and lollipops. The entire game is also wrapped in a cute package with silly cartoon sound effects and upbeat music. And the main game is good, maybe even hecka good, but really the best part about Speedy Egbert is the level creator. Even the demo version I played included a built-in level editor which allowed you to easily make your own horrible levels. In fact, there is a Facebook group with a staggering 47 members sharing custom Egbert levels to this day. Or at least to this day like two years ago. It seems kind of inactive these days. If you would like to try out Speedy Egbert in 2024, I would recommend not downloading the original eGames release as it has actual spyware built into the original disc. Yeah, eGames were kind of scummy that way. Instead, download the freeware release of Speedy Bloopie, which is the original release before eGames got their grubby little hands on it. I have to say though, Speedy Egbert is a much better name than Bloopy or Bloopie, whatever that is. So the next game we're talking about is Comet Busters, released by Hamco in 1994. In the shareware scene, it was not uncommon to see clones of older arcade games, and the quality of said releases varied greatly. I would say very few were something memorable, but sometimes a clone does everything so well that it manages to improve the original, and Comet Busters is that clone. While this is an obvious copy of classic Asteroids gameplay, there were enough tweaks to make it a fresh experience. In addition to some impressive pre-rendered graphics, there were also new powers for your ship like shields and cloak. You also had sliders to customize the speed and abilities of your craft to your liking. Just like Asteroids, each level becomes increasingly frantic as you progress, but in this iteration there are also different cosmetics for Asteroids in each level, including some weird ones like Barney Heads and Pool Balls. By far my favorite feature of this game was the 4 player local co-op or tournament deathmatch modes. My little brother and I probably wasted more time than we care to admit huddled around the same keyboard playing this game. Unfortunately this game is kind of difficult to run on modern systems these days since it is a 16-bit executable, but if you can get it running it's still a pretty fun arcade game. So the next game on our list is Bad Toys 3D, released by Taibo Software in 1994. So do you remember when Wolfenstein 3D came out in 1992? Well, I, I don't actually, because I was two years old at the time. However, I do remember Bad Toys 3D, which is likely the first FPS game I remember playing. 
This game is kind of novel in that it runs a Wolf 3D style engine inside of Windows 3.1, which was unusual for the time. Gameplay wise, this is a pretty basic Wolf 3D style FPS. Although I did kind of get a kick out of reading the story uh, later on. I never actually read it back in the day. It's pretty goofy. Basically, the game is about uh, a toy company that's bought out by a military organization and then toys to start randomly killing people. And I guess, you know, you're sent in as like some sort of special agent to kill all the toys then. I don't know. It's who really reads the shareware story, but you know, you know, it's there, I guess. Get, they tried. And the whole game is probably aged about the same as Wolf 3D, I would say. A pretty old school FPS styled game. This one's memorable for me because of the silly yet kind of unsettling enemies and the fact that I think I got in trouble when my parents found me playing it because of, you know, comic violence. Probably no real reason to go back and play this one today aside from nostalgia, but it's a neat game that I remember. So let's talk about our last game, which is Sky Roads by Blue Moon Software, released in 1993. Anyone who is into DOS gaming has probably played Sky Roads or got angry when playing Sky Roads. I still can't help but love this game, especially the aesthetics and the music. The entire game sort of feels like a playable demo scene program in a way that may give you a blast of nostalgia even if you never played it when it came out. The game itself sort of plays like an endless runner game with the difference being each level can be completed. I would say if Sky Roads has a story, I, I don't think there is one, I would assume it consists of how the Federal Sky Road Commission does a horrible job maintaining the Sky Roads, but I don't think there's a story in the real documentation, but that, that's my fanfic. Anyway, your only controls for the game are forward, left, right, and jump to navigate the broken roads of space. Each level gets progressively more difficult, but at least the game gives you the option to skip ahead to any level you want to. Some levels even have different gravity and very limited fuel, which varies gameplay a bit between levels. It's a fun concept that has aged pretty well, although it is a bit frustrating at times. However, for a free game in 1993, it's pretty amazing. I would also be amiss not to mention that later on, Sky Roads had a special Xmas edition, which was even more difficult than the original. Yikes. But yeah, overall, Sky Roads, awesome game, awesome music, really frustrating, definitely recommend it. Well, that brings us to the end of my list for today, but I'd like to ask you, the viewer, what shareware games did you enjoy back in the day? Drop a comment below, I'd love to hear what you have to say. And if you like this type of content, maybe consider subscribing, as I have many more videos to watch, and maybe, just maybe, I'll see you in the next one. And as always, I'd like to shout out my YouTube members, and if you would like your name at the end of a random guy's YouTube video like this, uh, you can become a member. 